Hi, welcome back to Garden Ninja. Now today we are back in the Exploding Atom Garden. And it's a really exciting video today because I'm going to be showing you the progress of all the beds that I put in last year. So a lot of the previous videos have been all about the hard work, the toil, fitting edging, building gabions, planting trees in the middle of winter and all that jazz. But the hard work is really paid off now. Now you may remember the high impact gardening guide that I did and this is the border now a year on and I am so impressed with it. You may remember I kind of called it the dark gothic moody border and it really does do that. We've got things here, so excited. The cardoons that are bursting up, we've got the angelica gigas that's going to be the purple angelica. We've got all these moody purple plants including the thalictrum, get my way around, there it is. Uh, just come up, that's going to double in size by next year. As I've mentioned, the cardoon, we've got grasses, we've got some actea, which is like a purple. It's a bit of a strange one, actea. It um, sends up spikes in September. It's got dark purple leaves, looked a bit ferny, a bit woodland, um, really lovely plant. We've got down here, you can see this. We've got salvias, we have got uh, ergocercium, which is like a little red thistle, really beautiful. Um, and loads of the lovely plants. Obviously, we've got the hazel, we've got the, the stygiate tree there. Da, 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 da. It's all up to the top. Um, so, I'm really impressed with that one. I'm going to walk around away from the goth border. We're going to come out here to kind of the, the inner ring. No, it's not the inner ring, the middle ring, sorry. Down here, if I bend down, you'll be able to see. Yep, we've got salvias again. We've got, which is beautiful, the valerian there. Got more height in these borders than the others. Um, we've got reds and purples and whites linking together. So we've gone from purple on the goth border, reds, whites, pinks. We've got the wild and woody outer ring. Remember, I did that last year, which we'll move on to next. And then the inner ring is the one I'm going to start planting up today, which is going to be all those red hot prairie border plants, real hot border, kind of put your sunglasses on, get yourself a gin and tonic. It's too hot when you sat there. Have a look back here. This is one of the outer um, woody borders that I did last year. We've got birch, we've got grasses like the Melinia. We have fleabane down here, um, which pretty much grows anywhere. It's great to sell seeds, I love it. We've got lamium, which is a non singing nettle. Good old alcamilla down here. Always get some of that in. It pretty much grows everywhere. Wonderful plant. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the flash rush around the garden as to where we're up to. But now we're going to move on to the inner ring and show you how I'm going to plant out all those little herbaceous plants that I've grown from seed. So come on, let's get planting. So here I am at my cold frame. So I've been growing all my own herbaceous this year without plastic, gardening without plastic, hashtag plastic free. Um, I've been growing them on since about February. Now a number of the exploding atom garden plants are in here. We've got things like scabious, the Achillea, got Hellaniums, which are a real pain to germinate. They're all in here, they've done really well. So the next stage is to take them out of these cold frames, and they've been in here for roughly two weeks to have them off, and then move them into the exploding atom garden, lay them out, and get them into the ground. So I've already planted in a number of kind of filler plants. So here we've got a geum and this is Scarlet Tempest. We've got other orange geums, yellow ones. We've got the cocktail mix with the banana daiquiri, um, which if you know geums, you'll be familiar with. And they've all got sort of different growth habits. But ultimately, they always have these amazing flowers that run through like the entire season. I've also, if you look down here, I've been growing Crocosmia from corms, which is kind of, it's not a bulb, that's incorrect but like tubers, corms, you grow in pots or under the ground that then send out shoots. So we've got Lucifer here, which is like a red, angry, devilishly hot Crucosmia. We've got a yellow one and we've got an orange. And all the names will be on my website. I can't remember them off the top of my head. 
but I grew those from Combs in pots early this year. They've been planted out with the GMs. We've also got some amazing grasses from Knowles and um, grasses down south. We've got one called Headbanger, which I love. I'll show you more of those later on, but let's go and get the herbaceous stuff and I'll show you how I'm going to lay it out. So before I start planting, I need to have made sure that I've removed all the perennial weeds. I'm also using this oscillating hoe, also known as a stirrup hoe, to remove some of the annual weeds that have popped up in the last few days. It's a really good tool to have in the garden. It slices through the weeds, meaning that you're not having to bend over too much or break your back. And if you do it once or twice a week, you can keep on top of weeds without having to do wholesale, massive bouts of weeding. So the first thing I do is I lay them out and I tend to group mine in groups of three or five. I find if you just dot them around and mix them all up, then it kind of looks a bit scattergun and pick and mix. And the whole purpose of this garden is that it's high impact. So I'm moving them around in groups of three and five and when I'm ready, I will then commit them to the ground. So here we've got a mix of the newspaper pots, coir pots, cardboard pots and the infamous cow poo pots and they're going to be laid out in the garden before I plant them. So once you're in a position where I'm happy with them I commit them to the ground. Now with the newspaper and cardboard pots I bury them entirely so I don't take them out of the pots but with the coir pots because they take a long time to break down I've been decanting them before putting them into the ground. And with all planting no matter how wet and damp the day is when you plant your plants you still need to water them in. You need to treat all new plants as if they're still in containers. So for the first couple of weeks, and in some instances months, you're going to have to keep watering them until the roots establish. So I've got a large number of the plants in today, but there's still probably another 50 to 75 to go in, but they're not quite ready yet. So I'll be putting those in in a few more weeks time. So if you've liked this video, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel? Give me a thumbs up and like this video. And if you've got questions, pop them in the comments below and I will answer them. I've got loads more garden design, hints, tips and hacks on this YouTube channel for both beginner and expert gardeners alike. I've been Garden Ninja, happy gardening.